We're, we're going to do a little bit of a different dispatch this week. I, I don't do these very often. I usually have like a scripted written version of the dispatch, but this week, uh, because of the big news that, that did break, um, I am going to... Uh, it's going to be a little bit looser. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more casual uh, the way that I'm going to do uh, this dispatch. So I hope you guys are cool with that. Um, obviously, the the big the big news that everybody's going to talk about uh, all week, <laughs> um, unfortunately, is uh, Kamala Harris, uh, who has just been selected as Joe Biden's vice president now. There are probably a few of you that listen to this podcast on a pretty regular basis that follow um, all the videos I put out, uh, all the stuff that I have done. Uh, so you will, you probably already know that I'm not a big fan of, of Kamala Harris. Never been a big fan of Kamala Harris. Um, a major thing that I think people uh, don't realize is like I'm not a Democrat. I've never claimed to be. I've never claimed to be part of any party. I've never affiliated myself with any any particular party. Um, I've always said the closest party that probably lines up to what I believe in uh, is like the, the Socialist Party of America, which uh, I don't particularly think is prevalent right now, uh, which is a shame. Uh, or the Green Party. Those are. The, but I've never. I've never been like I am a registered you know like it's just i've never needed to and you know i got my citizenship uh in december so like now it's like okay I, you know like i guess i should register with the party and i registered with the democrats in pennsylvania because we are a closed primary state which meant that if i wanted to vote in the primaries i had to register as a democrat because that's just how it works and it's a shitty system and it doesn't you know the, the party's never really represented me um uh before i knew about the greens and the libertarians and things like that I, and i think i did a video about it like the first time i really talked about a third party was back in 2013 2014 something like that i did a video about it uh, with uh, uh, the old version of Forkful of Doodles when I used to have characters and things of that sort. Uh, but, you know, for, for one, I'm not particularly surprised that Joe Biden picked Kamala Harris. Uh, it doesn't, it still doesn't mean like I'm not disappointed in it. Um, it's one of those things like when you kind of when you have an inkling and then you find out that inkling is true, you're like, ah, fuck, okay. It is just, it's about as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. I knew, I knew he was going to pick um, Kamala Harris or someone like Kamala Harris, right? Uh, he had Susan Rice, who's uh, a pretty major warmonger, um, worked, worked with her in the Obama administration, but... Um, that would have, I mean, that would have been a bit of a stretch because Kamala is more, has been more in the public light. Uh, her name has kind of been out there, even though she didn't do well in the primaries, right? And here's, here's the, I'll get into more of the specifics later, but even mentioning that, right, that she didn't do well in the primaries, even though that is like an, that is like an objective fact of the matter, <laughs> Uh, the the any blue people, the staunch Democrats and the liberals will be like, oh, it's a Trump thing. That's a Trump. That's you can't say that because it's a Trump thing. That's a because it's a Trump thing. It's probably not true. And it's just like you saw the numbers, like. But I don't um, dislike Kamala Harris because she is a black woman. Um, Although I believe she's half black, half Indian, uh, I think. Don't quote me on that. I believe that that's her ethnicity is that she's half black, half Indian. But anyway, uh, a woman of color has has been selected by Joe Biden, and you know it's it's like that. That is sort of the big thing that Democrats are holding on to, as they always do. They always play the identity politics, and they use the identity to excuse 
the really terrible things that they do, right? Like, that's kind of what they did with Obama. They were like, oh, Obama, first black president, that's amazing. Let's excuse all of the wars he started. Let's excuse the fact that Citibank fucking picked his uh, cabinet. Let's excuse the fact that uh, 10 million people lost their homes because he decided to bail out the banks instead of the people. Let's excuse him uh, expanding the wars in the Middle East from two to seven. Let's excuse his his persecution of uh, Edward Snowden and Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning and da- and what led to Danny, uh, Daniel Everett Hale. All of these are whistleblowers. What happened to John Kiriakou? All of these are whistleblowers that you you persecuted and started a war instead of owning up to what you did <clears throat> and you know uh, making a more transparent administration and he had every opportunity to do it and we excuse all of those things and democrats will constantly excuse him because he was the first black president and that's disappointing it's disappointing because first of all i don't want it to sound like i'm being more harsh on obama because he was the first black president clinton could have done put some restrictions in place and he didn't bush same thing you know uh, any democratic president in the last 40 years could have uh been less of a war hawk could have put in medicare for all could have restrained the banks a whole lot more but they didn't we talk about the democratic party being this party of peace this party of uh social progress and all of these other things that we say about the dem but but they don't line up with anything that the democratic party does or votes on or legislates on behalf of they're not the party of the people they're they're not the party of the working class as they claim to be right so i don't want to i don't i don't i am not disliking Kamala Harris because she's a black woman that's ridiculous and anybody that knows me or has listened to anything that I have said should be able to figure that out but I know that is one of the avenues that this will take right is is my criticism of Kamala specifically it's going to be like well you just don't like strong black women it's like no I like Nina Turner Barbara Lee's pretty cool Kathleen uh, Cleaver was pretty dope you know, there's plenty of women of color in powerful positions. You know, Tulsi Gabbard. I supported Tulsi Gabbard. She checked all the boxes of the Democratic Party identity politics. She was a woman of color. She was American Samoan. She was would have been the first Hindu president. She was a veteran. But because she was a veteran and didn't come out and speak for the american military industrial complex that was one of the reasons they blackballed her all of these people are 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 much better human beings in general than kamala harris the reason i say that is because of kamala harris's record and who kamala harris is she has done nothing since all of this stuff has come well into the light you know and and what I'm about to talk about, I've had a couple people be like, "Well, she, well, that's all in the open. Everybody knows about that now." Uh, uh, okay. So, what, what like what are we what are we talking about here, right? And it's just and that's <laughs> that's they'll just be like, "Well, everybody, know, I, yeah, but what is what is she doing about it? Everybody knows about it now." They're like, "Well, if you're talking the affair is a different," and I was like, "I don't give a shit about her affair." I give a shit about these. I give a shit about the fact that she held evidence to keep a man in prison, to 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 get a man killed. She laughed about it. She's put so many people in prison for non-violent uh, drug offenses. She ran. Uh, one of her policies was to uh, imprison and fine the parents of truant children. Which is which is crazy, and she did right. These like, and this specifically affected women of color, single moms, and poor moms, poor families. That's who it affected. 
And instead of instead of looking at that situation and saying, well, why is this child not wanting to go to school? And how can we help them? She was like, no, 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 we'll make you go to school. And when you don't go to school because you have anxiety or you're depressed or you have something else going on or you're facing bullying or what have you, we'll, we'll punish your parents for it. How do you like that, you fucking kid? And now, not only are you creating more issues for the prison industrial complex she has she has created more mental health issues in a new generation of kids i mean she's created trauma for these kids to watch your parents go to prison because you skipped school for whatever reason you skipped school instead of identifying those reasons you sent the parents to prison is looney tunes that's the vice presidential choice. She is a massive supporter of the prison industrial complex. She puts so many people in prison. And she has a... Um, there's a speech that she did where she talked about how, uh, you know, picketers will have signs that'll say something like... Uh, more schools, less prisons. More schools, less prisons. And, and she goes, conceptually speaking, I, I like that idea, but it's never going to work. It's never going to work because you won't legislate on that. That's your job. Your job is to legislate on behalf of those things. And you just came out and said that you would rather have more prisons and less schools less education and more prisoners so what do you do at that point is you then have to make up laws you have to make up shit to imprison people she she doesn't i mean we don't really know where the fuck she stands on medicare for all she flip-flopped on it so many times i doubt that she does right like kamala harris is not like a medicare for all candidate um, I think that she wants to keep the private insurance companies because the private insurance companies pay her. Uh, she she blamed Russia for the fact that Tulsi Gabbard exposed her fucking record. Like, no, that's your record, lady. Like, that's fucking out there. All Tulsi did is put it on national television for people that aren't going to do the research because that's what Americans do when it comes to the election they make it into this super important sport but they won't do any of the research it's so important it's the most important thing that you can ever do is vote for a candidate vote for anybody but no they won't go do the research to find out who these people are it's the oh my god this is the this is the ultimate thing that you can do to secure the but i'm not going to look up any stories about who this person is. She, she blamed Kaepernick kneeling on Russia. <laughs> Mix that with Joe Biden's record. There's an ad. Uh, I, I, uh, some of, yeah, I mentioned this a little bit. I, I uh, take care of, uh, uh, help take care of an elderly lady. And we watch the news, right? So it's so a cable news. And there's an ad that'll come up. It's an anti-Biden ad. And it's, uh, I say anti-Biden and not pro-Trump because uh, we're not pro-fucking anything in this election. We're all voting against a thing. A lot of us are anyway. I think that primarily it's, it's a vote against situation, which I hate and I think it's dumb. And that's not how a election's supposed to work. Anyway, the anti-Biden thing says that he supports defunding the police and you know like babies are gonna die or whatever and it's just funny to me because i'm like no he doesn't he doesn't believe in defunding the police he's flat out come on and said that he doesn't believe in defunding the police also he picked the top cop to be his running mate which unequivocally unequivocally means that he's not for defunding the police it unequivocally means that he is for strengthening the police he is for creating more tight, tighter and more fucking authoritarian. But sending moms to prison because of truant kids, 
Like, you, you don't do that in a democracy. I've mentioned this stuff before, and I've gotten slammed for it. I've gotten slammed for it by these staunch Democrats and these, you know, these, these, these super, oh, I'm so progressive and I'm liberal. I'm the liberal progressive, you know, fucking, we need, we need somebody different. These anti-Trump fucking any blue will do kind of people. And it's exhausting um, to, to deal with these people. It, it, it really is. Uh, they, I mean, it turns into an attack on me very quickly right there's no discourse to be had uh and they throw these terms right i've i've been said uh for being a bernie or a tulsi supporter that it is my white privilege i'm an immigrant from india i'm the furthest away from fucking white privilege that's happened to me three or four times in the last three months alone and only one of those times has the person been like, that's, I, I, I may, I fucked up only once. Right. So we're looking at about a 25%, but, but then they still go back and they justify this thing of like, well, Trump is the worst thing that could possibly have. No, it's not. And I think it's because people can't imagine that it can get worse. Right. And, and by the way, all of these people that come after me are all fucking white. They're all, like, mostly white dudes. I've had one um, kind of elderly white lady be basically come out and be like, I don't like that you make fun of Joe Biden. I don't like that you point out these things about Joe Biden. And I was like, the facts about Joe Biden, like, you don't like that these are real things that Joe Biden has done? She's like, well, if I'm going to, because to them, if they're going to vote their conscience, they have to straight up ignore this, ignore all of the shitty things that he's done. And now they're going to do the same thing with Kamala Harris and focus on the fact that she's a black woman. That's what they want. That's what the Democratic Party wants. So in pointing that out, apparently it's my white privilege, you guys. As an Indian, as an Indian brown immigrant that tours around the country, or used to, tour around the country, go into the South, go into cities that these, these fucking white liberals consider, you know to be trash holes full of Republicans that, you know, want to string up gays or whatever. They turn me into the bad guy. And, they, and then they make the argument of like, well, we got to vote for the lesser of two peoples. And it's like, do you hear yourself talk? Because you're making an argument for evil. We're still going to vote for evil. We're still going to vote for a bad thing. And to me, whenever, whenever this Buster of Two Evils argument gets made, I just hear them going, it's too hard to pay attention to things. It's too hard for me to, to be involved in my country. It's too involved, it's too, it's too much for me to, to, to actually pay attention and be involved and push back and fight. For my rights, I I'm so used to my rights just being kind of handed to me, and and my rights just kind of kept there, and I don't have to do anything. I have a passive relationship with the, with my rights. I have a passive relationship with my votes. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to. A lot of the people that make these arguments are that way, and you know they'll come after me about things, and you know I do a lot of research for the videos that I do and um, the, the the shows that I write and all this stuff. And, and a lot of that is like, you know, I do that because I, I want to do that. And I, and I talk about things that I want to talk about, not things that I feel like I needed to talk about or something like that, you know? And um, so I just learn stuff, but I don't learn stuff to like, be like, I'm now the smartest of all of the lefties. Like, it's just, I want to share that information, and the vehicle that I share that information through is comedy. That's how I like to do it. But these people are like, no, I don't, that's too much. I don't want to actually, you know, learn about the real history of this country and how this two-party system is, 
you know, two sides of the same coin. If you point that out, I'm going to use words like false equivalency and straw man and hyperbole. And then when I ask them about it and I go, how? Like, I'll, I'll, I, I said Obama take, took us from two wars to seven. And they were like, hyperbole? Seven, oh, pff, seven wars. That's crazy. It's not seven. Okay. You, do you believe that two wars is it is okay though like you're justifying the two wars by the way the two wars that you're justifying were started by a republican but that's but that's fine right like but this is the this is like the vitriolic hypocrisy that they go into they don't know how to justify their arguments they just know how to say these words and if they say something is a false equivalency then they don't have to come up with an actual response to it they don't have to come up with an actual justification. They don't have to make arguments against it. Well, false equivalency. We have to. We don't have to say anything further. How is it a false equivalency? Ah, we already said false equivalency. We're done. We're out of here. Why are you talking to uh, this? I won the argument. That's uh, the liberals don't know how to debate anymore. And it's becoming more and more evident the more electoral politics comes out. I think you guys probably know that I'm, I have a pretty jaded view on electoral politics. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cynical about it, uh, especially the fact that, you know, I've been in this country for 23 years. I got my citizenship. My, my, my hope was at least to be able to vote for either Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard in the, uh, in the primary, which is why I registered as a Democrat. And, the, and I didn't. And, you know, I, I thought about it. I was very disappointed with everything that happened with Bernie, everything that happened with Tulsi. And I decided, like, you know, I don't think, um, I don't think electoral, first of all, I, I believe that electoral politics isn't the be-all, end-all, but how I really, like, it's kind of solidified, right? I think there's other things you can do. Uh, you can amplify voices, you can support financially, uh, mutual aids, and um, socialist movements, labor movements, you can support strikes. Uh, support the people that are talking about the things that you're talking about. Go out, if you can't go out to protest, um, those are some ways to do it. Go out and protest if you can. If you can protest, if you can join the, a movement, if you can push back, then push back. But in some way, you know, like like my thing, I, you know, I was, I was kind of lost for a little bit, but it was just like, I want to talk about these things. I want to talk about things that are important. I want to talk about the things that I think we need to be doing as, uh, as citizens of this country or as just, or as just residents of this country. Um, you know, so I wanted to make sure that people were getting educated, but, you know, and that's the, that's the thing of it is with these, with these Democrats, liberals, any blue will do kind of people. These, these these people that are so have this Trump derangement syndrome. First of all, all of them are white, and I hate to make that identity identity politics thing, but it's but it's mostly white people. Even even if there is a black person that disagrees with me, they are willing to have a conversation with me about it. And on top of that, it's kind of older white dudes i'm just this is just what i've noticed with people that come after me and they get very aggressive like it turns into an insult contest very quickly and i don't like to participate in insulting people it's just not my thing i am not, I'm not particularly a fan of it um i can but it's not a side of my self that i like very much so i try not to like go down that route and i think it's because this is the first time that like white dudes are feeling the same kind of fear that any minority has ever faced women lgbtq people uh black people immigrants you know like we have constantly been at a heightened level of like something could happen right i could be shot by the cops i could have my rights stripped away i could be deported and this is the first time that like a white dude is feeling that kind of anxiety. And so they have aligned themselves up with this party, with the Democratic Party, and they've made their identity the Democratic Party, because to them, the Democratic Party is the party of progress, even though it's just another face of corporatism. 
So when the party gets attacked, they get attacked personally. And then I have people that are just like, well, I'm not a Democrat. And I'm like, then why are you coming after me for criticizing the party? You should be able to criticize the party. And they go, well, Trump. So what? Because this guy's in office, we have to excuse. And once again, it's just back to this, like, we're just going to excuse everything that the Democrats do because we don't like this. We don't like who's in office now. It's very petty, and it and again, it's like it takes you away from critical thought. It takes you away from being able to have a rational conversation and standing by your beliefs. This is the last statement I'll I'll, uh, I'll make is, I think voting is a personal choice, and regardless of who you vote for, you should be honest about why you're voting for that person. That's really all I'm, I'm making an argument for. I'm not even telling you who to vote for. I'm making an argument of this is where I'm coming from, and here's why, and they tell me that it's wrong, and I go why, and they don't have a they don't have an explanation for me. So whatever your choice is, uh, you know, I I decided in 2016 I wasn't going to vote shame anybody, and I haven't, um, and I refuse to. I refuse to play that game. I think it is um, highly unproductive. But what I will say is, however you choose to vote, whoever you choose to vote for, be honest about why you're voting for them. And stop telling other people who to fucking vote for. And stop making insults your fucking argument. You're an idiot is not an argument. All right, uh, so that's kind of the uh, the little dispatch there. Uh, I am very excited about the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows that are coming up. Uh, the next show is August 14th. August 14th, uh, I'm going to be donating to Action for Assange to help them cover uh, all of the stories and uh, news related to the Julian Assange trial that's coming up in September. Uh, and then the following one is on August 28th. And then moving forward, uh, I will be doing three Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows every single month uh, on Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. you got to get tickets to come to those shows. The tickets uh, help me send you the login information. Uh, it's also one of the ways that I am earning my income since I can't tour around the country as I normally would so uh, three shows is what i'm doing and then uh, i'm also doing the st louis fringe festival from august 19th to the 21st go to stlouisfringe.com for all of those tickets uh I'm doing three shows three citizen revolution shows they are going to be uh versions of the citizen revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows that i normally would do uh so i'm taking past segments that i have done and uh and putting together an hour-long show uh so again regular citizen revolution shows august 14th august 28th and then we'll be heading into the fall with three shows every single month uh st lou fringe festival august 19th through the 21st go to stlouisfringe.com for those tickets for everything else you can go to my website krishmohanhaha.com that's k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a dot com and uh you can find my donate button there if you would like to uh donate and bec or become a sustaining member you can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member uh sustaining members get uh some pretty cool perks like uh uh unreleased stand-up comedy tracks free tickets to these virtual comedy shows uh you get weekly updates from me so a bunch of bonus content free tickets uh, uh, a, a lot of little goodies here and there. Uh, and lastly, one of the new things that you can do is follow me on Rockfin. If you're tired of YouTube and Facebook uh, censoring uh, the content that you like, censoring independent media that you enjoy, you can go check them out on Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin is a blockchain cryptocurrency site that acts as kind of like a Netflix for uh, content creators. Right now, a lot of the content creators on there are political content creators, uh, or dealing with wrestling and MMA. 
which is a weird blend, I know, but uh, hang with me. For, for 10 bucks a month, you get uh, access to all of the premium content that is released by all of these content creators, right? So you you get you got myself, Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, Miko House, The Convo Couch, Richard Mendhurst, Taylor Hudak, ton of people uh, that are on uh, Rockfin right now. If you wanna follow my channel, if you wanna support my work, uh, if you want to subscribe t through my channel, you can go to rockfin.com slash haha and check it out there. There's no censorship. There are no ads. It is uh, dr driven by the viewers and the content creators, and it is all specifically set to, um, to, to promote discourse, promote uh, all sorts of different kinds of thoughts, opinions, and points of view and make sure that content creators can get paid. So once again, that is rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Okay, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. I'm very excited to share it with you guys. Uh, 